Let's shift to UFOs. Speaking of things that only conspiracy theorists used to talk about, that now we all talk about, uh, Barack Obama, former President Barack Obama, who I assume the progressives will call a racist soon enough. Well, he, he mentioned some stuff about UFOs. Let's take a listen. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. We can't explain uh, how they moved, their trajectory, people still take seriously trying to investigate and figure out what that is. Dude, there's a f***ing drone, bro. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. Okay, so there's been more and more UFO footage over the last couple of months being leaked out. There's more and more, you know, seemingly credible people talking about it. I gotta tell you guys, this is literally the first time I've mentioned it on this show. And I thought that in and of itself tells you sort of where we're at in the world. That if aliens had landed last week, I'm not sure I would have mentioned it because there's so much other craziness going on. Uh, Cabot, you're very excited about this UFO situation. I have loved this. I mean, this has been one of the trending stories all month on our website too. I think our readers are really into it. I think average Americans, a lot of people are saying, for years we were called crazy if we asked any questions about UFOs. And now all of a sudden we've got the former president of the United States. We've got former defense officials and intelligence officials and Navy admirals coming out saying, yeah, there's something out there. We have no clue what it is. I think the three biggest likelihoods right now, number one is just that it's the United States government, that it's something going on. We've denied that it's us for all these sightings that we're seeing, but the timing does seem weird. There's all this stuff going on in the world. And then they all of a sudden decide to say, oh yeah, there are these unidentified aerial phenomena we don't know about. Here's all this footage to look at. The timing seems weird there. So I think that's probably the most likely. It could be something alien. I don't really know, but also, China, I just find it hard to believe that this is China, that all these craft we're seeing are China. The first footage that we have here is in 2004, long before China's new tech boom. Their aircraft carriers, their submarines are archaic compared to the United States. And for that technology not to manifest itself elsewhere in their military, and also for the Chinese not to brag about it, they brag at every opportunity they get about their new technology developments. So I just don't think it's China. At this point, I think it's either the United States or it's something else but I just find it hard to believe it's China. And if it is, that's a lot scarier than it being aliens, in my opinion. For the record, I've spent enough nights stoned watching ancient aliens to know that it's the lizard people. <laughs> but Liz, Liz, you're a woman of facts. You like facts, you like data, you like researching things. UFOs, a bridge too far? That was a really great tee up for this is the least sexy take on UFOs that you're ever going to hear. <laughs> First of all, Barack Obama's opinion on this means nothing to me. The title of his like 6,000 page memoir should be Trouble Recognizing Reality. So just because he can't recognize this means absolutely nothing to me. The, the most likely explanation for this, the most likely explanation is something called parallax, which is essentially visual distortion when objects of different speeds are traveling towards each other and then through camera lenses. There, I mean, that's literally the most likely explanation for this kind of stuff. But they're appearing it, on radar. So? Wouldn't, if it was a visual distortion, why would they appear on radar? And on oh, because you can, you can have other objects. So for example, there I think there's like three black and white grainy videos that are sort of forming the foundation of this. One of them shows something diving towards the water and then skidding along the water without right. appearing to decelerate, right? Well, if you take parallax into account, and I'm no expert on this, this is just what I read. It seems to me the most plausible theory. Uh, it actually is the shape, the size, and has the ability the same as a Canadian goose. So. I think, first of all, there are plausible explanations. The other thing is the context of the classification as UFO or unidentified aerial phenomena. It actually doesn't mean that it was never identified. Right. It means that when the pilot saw it, their immediate reaction was they couldn't immediately identify it. So it doesn't actually mean that these continued to be unidentified. They just had that classification initially. So I think the more realistic explanations are things like birds and things like commercial airliners that were out of focus, that were distorted by parallel relax, but I could be wrong. Probably I, not, but I might be. I love that the new divide in the conservative world will be whether little green men actually exist. Marlo, what do you think? Uh, I'm the hardest hit by this because for me, I was 100% convinced aliens were here. They were living among us mathematically. Maybe one of you guys were aliens. I'm just trying to trying to be logical here in mathematics. Uh, but now that Barack Obama and Joe Biden are on the UFOs, I'm 100% convinced they're not here. We're alone in the universe. <laughs> we'll never discover anything else. And I'm so disappointed. I was in tears. I was in a heap. Uh, but in all honesty, this does feel like a, a, a big distraction. There's a lot of problems going on in this country. Uh, Middle East is 
is on fire right now. The border's open and people are flooding through it. And now we're talking lab leak stuff. It's a, the jobs numbers are not where they should be. The energy cr- the sector is not where it should be. And now we're talking aliens. It seems like a total head fake by the government. And um, uh, it's fun, but it's, it's stupid hour. Yeah, <laughs> Kevin, to that point, you just mentioned that a lot of your readers are into this stuff. Does that sort of tell you that people are kind of like broken by politics? The stuff Alex just mentioned, like people kind of can't take this endless grind. That's sort of why I wanted to do this story with you guys, because there was obviously a plenty of stuff we could have talked about about the Middle East or anything else this week. And I was like, ah, people do need like a little bit of a silly break every now and again. I- I do think that's the case. I actually went out and filmed the Man on the Street video like this yesterday on in downtown Nashville. I talked to about 50 people, very anecdotal, but of all those people, the number one response was, I don't trust the government. Yeah. It was people on the left and right. People were saying, look, this could be aliens. Those videos are pretty scary. It's kind of wild that they're appearing on infrared and radar and it's not just, you know, some, all this only grainy stuff. But at the end of the day, they're like, the government after all this year, I don't really trust them on anything. And I think that's where a lot of people are. And I do think a big part of it is it's fun. We've all been locked in for the last year and a half. And we've all only ever heard kind of fringe people talking about these things. And so now to get to hear these legitimate senators and intelligence members and Navy admirals and commanders and things coming forward saying these things, it does add an extra layer of intrigue where they're now saying, wait a second, it's no longer crazy. I can talk about it more. And I do think a lot of it's just fun for people. Yeah, that's does this mean Alex me. Jones can does this mean Alex Jones can get back on YouTube? Oh yeah, I'm sure they're <laughs> I'm sure they're reinstating the account at any moment now. But that's that's really interesting to me what you said there, Cabot. This idea that most people their answer came down to not whether aliens exist, but I don't trust the government. And I I mentioned before, and I know you guys are all on board on this. And Alex, you just wrote a book about it: the lack of trust in media. And it seems to me, Liz, like that's the biggest issue right now. We don't have trusted sources to the point that people try to. I suppose, seek out people like us, but we're just people too who can only, you know, siphon through the information that we're given. Right. And I, I think building on Cabot's point a little bit, too, that people don't trust the government, but I think it's a little bit more existential than that. Even people are trying to seek something greater than themselves, oftentimes, especially people who aren't particularly religious. And so they're really fascinated by the idea that there might be some kind of overlords out there, even even if they're not connected with us, even if they're not our overlords, they're fascinated by the idea of something greater or something in the great beyond. And so I think that feeds into it a little bit um, as well. But yeah, I mean, the media doesn't tell the truth what you do, Dave, and what I do and what Alex and what Cabot does. I mean, what we're doing is we are sifting through the facts because so because the mainstream outlets, the corporate outlets, the liberal outlets won't do it. That's that's what I mean, that's what we do even about fun stories. We look to see what is plausible, what's not plausible, what's backed up with fact, what's contradicted, what's narrative, what's not, what's corrupt, who's corrupted. Um, and we present the truth. And that's why our type of media has been so successful compared to the corporate media. 